Good evening. Um, I'm Principal Ross Tebow. It's my pleasure to be here at the PTO meeting uh, this evening to introduce our uh, presenters this evening. We have Mrs. Bridget De Silva, who's the Director of School Counseling and Support Services here at Dartmouth High School. And we also have um, Ms. Nicole Heath, who is one of our school counselors here at Dartmouth High School. Uh, we're excited to be able to present the services that our counseling department um, provides to students free of charge. Um, you know, talking with Andrea uh, about different presentations that we would do at the PTO meetings this year to hopefully draw in a crowd and provide information that's helpful to our parents. Um, this was one of the first topics that came up. Uh, I think later on there'll be a um, college, uh, college edge presentation probably later on this school year at some point. But we thought it was important that we provide information about all of the services that our counselors provide to our students daily, free of charge. Um, and then if parents want to um, seek out other additional opportunities in the community, that's all well and good. But I think we think it's important that we um, provide information about what services we provide. And we do provide quite a bit of services, uh, quite a few services to our students, particularly with res uh, respect to post-secondary planning. And so without further ado, I will turn it over to Mrs. Bridget De Silva and Ms. Nicole Heath. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Our DHS School Counseling and Support Services Department, we have a department that has four school counselors, um, Ms. Heath being one of them. We also have Ms. Fitzgerald, Mr. Jeggers, and Mr. Wright. We also have four social workers that work with the students here. We have Mrs. Callahan, Mrs. Glacier, Mrs. Thomas, and Ms. Holmes. And then we also have our school psychologist, Doc, uh, Laura Long. Our school counseling website, we've been revising it, revamping it over the last few years, and we're constantly adding new information to it. So it's, it's a work in progress, and you will see if you access it, we have a lot of different information on it. Right now, this is our main page, and we have who our student support teams are, including the assistant principals, the school counselors, social workers, and then we are, all, we are also connected to our Twitter account, the guidance Twitter account, and on the left-hand side is the different information points. Um, it has academic information, the college and career resources, social, social emotional resources, um, and again, it's constantly being updated. We also have our DHS post-secondary website. This has every information. Um, it has Common App information. It has all branches of the military information. It has gap year information, um, specific training programs, and several of our counselors work on this as one of their um, students' goals for, uh, throughout the year. We also have testing resources. Again, this is always updated as well. So it's not, the information is current and up to date. Our school counselor assignments, each of the school counselors here have approximately 265 students assigned to them. So each year they are responsible for that amount of students. It is traditionally, we try to keep the same alpha split for freshman through senior year. We do have to make adjustments at different points because sometimes other guidance counselors, based on uh, students' last names, the caseload gets over 265. So sometimes when it comes to senior years, we could have counselors that have an abundance of students and then others that do not have a lot of students. So, each counselor is responsible for each of their students for the four years that they are here at DHS. Some of our school counseling services, and this is just you know, a quick snapshot of most of the stuff that we do pretty much on a daily basis. Uh, we do uh, grade level classroom presentations. Uh, we also do post-secondary advising. Each of the counselors and myself, we meet with college admission representatives throughout the year. Sometimes it's on campus, other times it's at the particular colleges. We do course selections. We also go down to the middle school. 
We also provide outreach via grade level Google Classroom. So each of the students right now have been invited to their grade level Google Classroom. That has information posted, updated. Each guidance counselor, if they receive information, for example, UMass Dartmouth might send us something and we'll upload it to the Google Classroom for the seniors. So they'll have that information. We also sh set up shadow opportunities for incoming students. That could be students at Dartmouth Middle School. That could be students coming from Friends Academy, schools in the area, uh, families that are looking to transition to come into the Dartmouth community. And what we do is we match them to students in that particular grade level, the academic levels that they're looking at and their interests. So if they're a student that's interested in BAN, we try to match them. And what they'll do is they'll follow that particular student through an entire school day to get a true effect of what their day would look like. We have student support meetings that include myself, the school counselors, the social workers, assistant principals, and the school psychologists. We meet on a weekly basis by our alphabetical split. Um, so each of us will meet once a week, talk about students that are coming up, whether it's academic, social emotional families have called us and it's a it's a time for us to get together and use our resources and try to come up with a plan we also um, have 504 and iep meetings as well as transitional support meetings for students that are assigned to our caseload we set up parents meetings as requested and also contribute weekly to the community updates so that is sent out every week by mr tebow um, and it has information from the school counseling department. S services activities for our freshman year. So we do introduce the students in their ninth grade year to Naviance, which is our platform that we use starting in grade nine. And that we start with giving them information on how to use it, where to go to log in, what information is on that platform, as well as we have them complete a personality inventory. And that is one of the things all freshmen will complete. It helps identify their personalities and what their interests may be. There are other things they can do on it, but we do have all freshmen complete that personality in inventory. Each guidance counselor has individual appointments with their freshmen. We communicate with families and then monitor grading through progress reports, report cards, and as teachers reach out to us. In the sophomore year, we have a little bit more of a grade level presentations. We go over the PSAT results. So once students get that, if they do not have a college board account, they help them create a college board account. They will also link their PSAT scores to the Khan Academy, which will help them improve on the, the areas that they didn't score well on. And we do have a, a whole presentation that we do for that. And what we have done in the past is we upload it to the Google Classroom and we'll also put it on the school website. So if parents wanna go and look at that information later, they'll be able to access it. We also inform students based on their PSAT results, we have what we call an AP potential report. So based on what their scores are, it, sh it gives each of the students individual feedback on how they should be um, approaching the AP courses and it identifies courses that they would score, most likely score three or higher on. It doesn't mean that if there is a student that is interested in AP psychology, and they haven't been identified that they can't take it. If a student wants to take an advanced placement course here and is willing to put in the time, willing to put in the effort, we encourage any student to sign up for those courses. Again, individual appointments. And for sophomore year, the Naviance activities, we have them uh, complete the career cluster finder. It helps them identify their interest in the career industry. We also do a career interest profiler and it identifies, again, more personality traits and suggests careers. Because what we find sometimes as students start in high school, by the time their sophomore comes around, they've matured a little bit more, and sometimes their interests are changing based on courses that they have taken. We also do a strengths explorer. It helps students identify what their strengths are. And then we also relate that to academics. So if we find out that their particular strength is hands-on learning, we look to different courses to say, 
your strength is hands-on, so maybe you should take this course and you could do well in it. Again, communicate with families and monitor grades each grading term. In junior year, we have individual appointments. We also do the PSAT results for them. We do the grade level meetings to start talking about what their post-secondary options are. That can include anything from the student doesn't know what their plans are, to a gap year, to going off to the workforce, to military, two-year schools, four-year schools, trade technical schools. It's really wherever the student is at, that's where the counselors start at. We also meet with them to go over their MCAS results. We start, with the, we start them building a resume, and we have several different resources for them that the guidance counselors go over with them. We inform them about SAT, AC testing dates, and we also let them know what the current information is at that time. Because throughout the pandemic, many schools have turned to test optional, so they're not requiring the scores. But again, at any point, that could change again. We go over letters of recommendation, and it's during junior year that we advise the students to start seeking out their teachers and their letters of recommendation resources and start asking for them. Naviance, the students go in and do the college research and start adding the schools to the I'm thinking about list. And what that does is it gives them the information just listed in Naviance. It doesn't mean that they're applying to it. It just means they're thinking about it and they can see the specific required information. We also have the Supermatch college search. We do have the ASVAB exam that any student here in the building can take if they're interested. This year, we will be offering it on December 10th at 7.30. And it doesn't mean that the student is required to go into the military. They can take the exam to see where they score, how they score, and what potential career fields they are best suited for. Again, communicate with families and monitor student grades. And then senior year is where it is very time consuming. Uh, the guidance counselors meet with the students multiple times. Uh, we have students that will, you know, come before school, stay after school, go eat lunch with them. So we do have individual appointments to advise on post-secondary plans. We do, again, have the two-year, four-year um, colleges, the trade technical school, all branches of the military, gap year, workforce, or the unknowns. We have also started doing the Future Friday topics during our PACE period. So every Friday morning for 40 minutes, we will have students that can sign up for the Future Fridays. What we've done at this point is the Common App question and answer, We've done scholarship and financial aid. We've done resume writing. And then at different points, we will turn to just application general questions. Um, we will go towards letters of recommendation. The topics are endless. So if we find that a lot of students come to us and say, I need help on this, we will schedule a future Friday topic for them. And we advertise that through our uh, weekly community update. We also had a post-secondary college fair return this year. We had over 65 representative, representatives come to us. And those representatives, those are our admission reps that are reading our seniors' applications. Um, so we have many students who have already connected with their admissions reps. Um, we've had all branches of the military here. We had the Naval Academy here. So we do have a close connection. And even though we still have COVID going on, uh, that was a little bit down than in the past because we've had over 75 before. But again, the, the places that weren't able to come, they are still in communication with us and they still share information with our counselors. In Naviance, the students move their colleges from the colleges I'm thinking about to the colleges I'm applying to list. That is important because that's what allows them to stop filling out the application. And that is also what allows the guidance counselors to complete their required pieces of the application. We have Naviance support with requesting letters of recommendation, adding post-secondary choices, transcript requests, any questions that they have. If they're unsure, we might direct them to a particular assessment and have them complete that. 
provide current information, again, most up to date on SATs, ACTs. We also do scholarship resources, monitor student grades, graduation requirements, the MCAS completion, retest opportunities. We give them information about the John and Abigail Adams scholarship, the Coplex scholarship, and then just other general opportunities. We do have a scholarship list on our website um, and students can go to that. And Mrs. Peach, our guidance secretary, keeps it up to date. The college application process is quite lengthy, but again, we try to tell the students, we are here for you, we will help you, just let us know if you need help, if you get stuck, if you get overwhelmed. We, again, we will help each student. So each student meets with their school counselors, the student selects the colleges that they want to apply to through Naviance, and then Naviance tells them what the requirements are. So they'll let them know if it's a school that can be done through a common application, or if it's a school-based application, or if it's another online application. Naviance really is the center of all the information they'll need. Once the college applicate, uh, the student, sorry about that, student requests letters of recommendations from their teachers and school counselors if it's required from the colleges. Again, it's gonna tell them right on Naviance. Once the application is submitted, the students will request a transcript using their alphabetical assigned guidance counselor's Google form. The students will also need to pay for their transcript. And then the school counselors do check Naviance to see if there's any college deadlines approaching and submit the required information. So everything from us is submitted electronically. So we submit it directly through Naviance. We can tell once the colleges receive the information. We can see once it's downloaded. Uh, we will then send term one grades, mid-year grades, and then we send the final transcript. So prior to the student graduating, they let us know what their school is that they will be attending in the fall. And then based on that information, the guidance counselor sends the transcript to that school. If at any point the student changes their mind, they need to notify us, so then we can send a final transcript to that particular college. School counselors will assist students at any time during this process, will answer any questions, and again, if Ms. Heath was the assigned guidance counselor and she might not be available or she might not be in that day, it's she, the, your son or daughter can go see one of the other guidance counselors, they can come down and see me, I'm in lunch duty, I'm in the halls, so they can find somebody from the department and we will help them. We also help families out with the FAFSA process. We, we connect them to outside resources. We help with the CSS profile. Uh, we help parents, whatever they need, we will help. Just give us a call and we are there. We also go over award letters with students. So if they get a couple different schools and they're not sure based on the award letter, what should I do? This is my dream college, but they're only giving me this much. We go over that, we try to help them, and we give them the best advice that we can from the information we have in front of us. So our class of 2020, the post-secondary plans for that particular class, we had 71.9% of the class that attended a four-year either public or private uh, college. We had 16.3% attend a two-year college or a trade technical school. We had 3.6% go off into the workforce. And then we also had 1.2% in the armed services. Um, and 7% were in the unknown at that point. So this is typically um, the percentage of the students. And it's continued through the pandemic. We haven't seen a drop off. If anything, what we've seen is that the students want to stay closer to home, um, but they still are continuing post-secondary planning and making the appropriate choices. And this is just a partial list of the acceptances of schools that our students have gone to. Um, we have had anywhere from Brown to George Washington University, Harvard University, Many of our students go to one of the UMass campuses, uh, WPI, 
Again, our students are very competitive in the process. They are well prepared and we are here to help them. If you have any questions, I can turn the show over to Ms. Heath. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Comprehensive view of what we do. Does anyone have any questions about the process or what we do for students? It's on. Okay. I just fixed it, sweetheart. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let me read it. So thank you, Mrs. DeSilva, for that. Does anyone have any questions about the process or what we do day in and day out with students or how we can help with the college planning process? Because it is a huge part of what we do, and we take pride in it. So happy to answer anything. I'm thrilled to say that my senior is done. She got all of her applications in. Congratulations. Yes. I know what you've been through with, oh. the, with the senior year. <laughs> so yep she was just saying that her senior has just been through the process so she can relate so yeah thank you for that I know there's others in the room who have seniors have also been through the process lately so it is a, it is a bit of a process but mm -hmm. we do it as a team right you know we, we meet with the kids as many times as they need to whether sometimes the students want to meet 10 times you know just for their one application and then, <laughs> which is great and sometimes they they're pretty independent they want to meet once or twice but um, if we find that a student's being a little bit reluctant reaching out, we reach out to them. We find them, we call them in, make sure that they have a plan, regardless of what that plan is. Like you said, we meet them where they're at. So mm -hmm. we're pretty knowledgeable in helping them with whatever they need to do. It's a bit different, you know, like you said, with the pandemic happening, people are staying closer to home. There are changes in the application process. It's a bit of a more holistic approach lately, less standardized tests, more interviews, more letters of rec. Um, but we're here to help them. So. Thank you for having us tonight. Thank you.